Hi guys, it's Amber from Amber Reads Books and I'm here today to bring you my September Reads video. And this is the video where I discuss everything that I read in the month of September. I was able to finish seven books, I DNF'd one, and then I was able to start on an eighth one. But I don't think I'll be able to finish that one before September actually ends, so I'm going to probably include that one in my October Reads video. Anyway, let's get into these books. As I was going to start with my lowest ranked book and work my way up to my highest. This month, my lowest ranked book was The Girl with the Lower Back Tattoo by Amy Schumer. Now, I will preface this by saying I knew next to nothing about Amy Schumer when I picked this up. I only knew that she was a comedian. I knew other people had enjoyed the book, and that was it. I've never really seen her in anything. I have maybe saw a couple of interviews with her, um, but beyond that, I haven't actually physically watched any sort of movie or anything that she's been in. So I didn't know a lot going in, but that has never stopped me with celebrity memoirs, if you can call this a memoir, it's more like just a collection of stories. Um, that's never stopped me before. I've read plenty of them not knowing a ton or not being a huge fan of someone and then finding out, oh, I really like this person through their book. That actually happened with Trevor Noah. I knew who he was before and I sort of, I had seen, um, the Daily Show with him a couple of times, like some clips from it, but I knew next to nothing about him. And once I read his book, all of a sudden I became super invested in him and really um, am now a fan of his. So I thought maybe that would be the case going into this book. So we get into it and right off the bat, it's very vulgar. There's a lot of sexual just things just being thrown at you. And I'm not prudish in any way, but it just seemed over the top for me. I was like, okay, how many times can we keep saying this same thing before it just gets annoying? It loses its shock value. I understand her comedy is a lot about shocking her audience, but this was just like too much. But I stuck with it because there were a few little snippets and a few little stories that she was telling that were very relatable and some of them were a little endearing, and so I was like, well, there, I do feel like there's something going here. But by the time I got 40% of the way in and she was right back around to the vulgar sexual stories, I was just like, all right, <laughs> this book is just not for me. So I rated it two stars, and I don't have the first line because it was an audiobook. The next book that I read this month was The Perfect Girl by Gilly McMillan. This was for Lisa's Buddy Reads group. I'll leave all the information down below if you guys want to join in. And I have to say, this book was just okay. This was my first go around with this author. So I was actually really looking forward to it because a lot of people really liked this author. So I was like, yes, I'm going to enjoy it. And it just turned out okay. From what I wrote down in my notes, because it's been a couple of weeks since I read it, my pros were that it was easy to read and that it had a good pace, which I completely agree with. I was able to get through this book in two days, which was nothing for me. I probably could have done it in one if I had the time to sit down and actually read. So that was fine. I, I thought the storyline was okay. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Um, and my cons that I wrote down, I had no emotional attachment to the characters whatsoever, like not even a little bit. Um, I kept hoping that something would happen that would really bring my emotions into play because I'm such an emotional reader and that's how I rate my books based on my emotional connection to it and I just really didn't have one so that knocked it down quite a bit. Um, I thought the ending fell a little flat for me. I was expecting just a little bit more and also in this book there was too many loose ends for me to feel satisfied. I, like Lisa I think said in her review, I'm not a person that is normally bothered by loose ends, like there could be loose ends in the story and I'm perfectly fine not knowing what happened, but this one just had too many for me to really feel good about it. And I thought that why mention certain things if you're never gonna go back to them? It kind of annoyed me in that sense. So it was just all right. I would definitely try another book by this author though because I enjoyed the writing, it was fine and many of the girls recommended another book by her that I'm going to pick up. I forgot what it was. I think it's like what she knew or something like that. So I'm going to try it and see if this is an author for me or not because this one didn't leave the best impression on me, but I'm willing to at least give give her a second chance to see if she can redeem herself in my eyes. Like that means anything anyway. Um, lastly, would I buy or own this book? No, I'm so glad I borrowed it from the library so I don't waste my money on it. But 
maybe my feelings will change with the next one. The first line in this book is, before the concert begins, I stand inside the entrance to the church and look down the nave. The next book I picked up was The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. I picked this up for the Books and Jams read-along group on Goodreads, and that's hosted by Krista from Books and Jams, her channel here on BookTube. I was so excited to see that this was the pick for the month of September because I saw this book around. I just never had the chance to pick it up, and I didn't really know what it's about because, as you know, I like going into books sort of blind. I don't want to know much about them. I just... Like, I hear if someone likes it and if they have similar reading taste to me, I'm like, all right, I'm going to add that to my TBR. So that was kind of what happened with this book, and this just gave me the perfect excuse to actually pick it up and read it. This is the story of a man who owns a bookstore. His life has just had some things that happen that have brought him down. His wife has passed away. He ends up losing something that was very valuable to him. But then all of a sudden his life sort of shifts shifts directions and some new things happened that really changed the course of his life. I just loved it. Um, the prose for this book, I thought the characters were so likable and necessary. They didn't follow a huge cast of characters and I just loved reading about them. I also thought this book was about books and about the love of books and it was for book lovers really and that aspect alone just made me love this book it just made like a little soft spot in my heart for it I was like oh I love it um I will say the way that it's written kind of keeps you just a little bit of arm's length away from um the characters it's sort of written in short stories which I think you have to know going in each of the chapters each of the shorter short passages are kind of a story in itself and it's like a snapshot of of these characters lives it just skims the biggest moments in these characters lives so you're not really getting into the everyday nitty-gritty with them um, so that emotional connection that you kind of get from that isn't there you kind of have to fill in that connection by reading these short stories and like piecing them together um, but I really ended up enjoying that and I think looking at it from that perspective allowed me to enjoy it more than maybe some of the other people in the group because they didn't think that it it had enough of an emotional connection at times. But I really did. I, I loved it. And I would definitely read another book by her. And I think there's another one that someone recommended to me. Was it Maria from Read, Create, Repeat Homeschool. She might have recommended another one. I think it was Young Jane Young, Young or something. I added it to my TBR, so if I see it, I'm gonna pick it up the next time in the library. The cons for this book. The only thing I will say is that I would have liked to be more familiar with the books that are actually mentioned in here. Um, I wasn't really familiar with them. I, I've heard of them, but I've never read them myself, and I think that would have added an extra element to the story. I think it was Krista that might have mentioned that she would have liked to read each of the, I think it was short stories that were actually mentioned. She would like to read each of them before she read the chapter that corresponded with it. And I think that would have been a good thing to do. I may in the future go back and do that. So my last question, would I buy or own this book? Well, I wouldn't go out of my way to probably buy it. As much as I loved it, it's probably not something that I'm going to reread a bunch of times. I may take it out from the library again, but I probably wouldn't go out and buy it. However, if I saw it in a used bookstore for dirt cheap, I'd probably pick it up and add it to my collection just because I love the cover and I did enjoy the story. I ended up rating it 3.5 stars. And the first line in this book is... I can get to the page. On the ferry from Hyannis to Alice Island, Amelia Lohman paints her nails yellow and while waiting for them to dry, skims her predecessor's notes. The next book I picked up was Liesl and Poe by Lauren Oliver. This is a middle grade book. I will preface this review by saying, one, I was not in the mood to read this, so I kind of was forcing myself to read it just because I wanted to get my library books back, and two, I'm not the intended audience, so take my thoughts with a grain of salt just going into it um i picked this up because two booktubers that i really admire highly recommended it and i thought okay let's give it a go 
Had I maybe picked it up when I first got the book, way back in the beginning of July when I was excited to read it, my thoughts on the book may have been a different story. I really did enjoy it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I was going to. This is the story of Liesl who has recently lost her father. She has been hidden away in an attic by her stepmother when out of the corner of her eye one day she sees something materialize and it happens to be a ghost named Poe. It also follows the story of Will who is an alchemist um, helper and the alchemist is a person who makes magic and he ends up losing a very important box of magic and their stories kind of combine and we kind of go on the journey with them. It was fun. I love the premise of the book. I mean, ghosts, magic, mystery. It was so much fun going into it just for that. I thought that the writing was fantastic for a middle grade novel. I tried to read one other book by Lauren Oliver before and I didn't really enjoy it. So I was surprised, pleasantly so, that I liked the writing in this book. I thought she did a good job of being able to put you in these characters' emotional states and also being able to describe their surroundings and to describe the world that they're kind of in without being too overly descriptive. So I really like that. I also loved the illustrations in this book, which were done by Kai Asadera. I might be saying that wrong. But I really loved them. They were such a nice touch. I just was so happy to see these little pictures and little illustrations. Let me see if I can find another one. That's Liesl sitting in her attic window. They're just beautiful. I love that part of it. What did I not like about this book? One, like I said, I just wasn't in the right frame of mind to read it. So I was kind of hoping for a quicker read and I thought it just took a little too long to get to the real point of the story. Um, but if maybe I was younger and I was reading it, I would have thought it was a lot of fun and really a lot of adventure added into the story. But for me, it just took a little too long. Would I buy or own this book? Only if my daughter decided that she wanted to read it. Um, for me, it just wasn't something that I would want to own. So. Anyway, I still really liked it. I know this sounds like I didn't like the book, but I really did. I gave it 3.75 stars. I did enjoy it. It just was one of those books where I was expecting to give it like this rating and it kind of just got this rating. So it's not that I didn't like it. I just was expecting a lot more. Anyway, the first line in this book is, on the third night after the day her father died, Lisa saw the ghost. The next book I picked up was Seed by Lisa Heathfield. My friend Mamie from Mamie's Medleys recommended it and I was so eager to pick it up. We had both read Paper Butterflies by the same author and really enjoyed it. So I knew going into it that I was probably gonna at least like the writing style. This is a story of a girl who has grown up in a cult her entire life. She knows no different. And one day a boy moves in and kind of starts questioning the practices of the cult and that makes her start questioning the practices and a lot of stuff ensues from there. My pros for this book, I love the writing style. I already knew that going in, but I I was happy to find out that I, I still loved it in this second book. So normally I give a new author to me two books. If I didn't really like the first one, I'll at least try the second one, try another one to see if like the writing in that one was a little different and vice versa. But I really liked the first one and I was hoping that by really liking the second one, this was this would cement her as a new favorite author, which it did. I will happily pick up any more books that she writes. Um, I also really loved being immersed in the world of Seed. That's what they call where they live. They call it Seed. And it sort of felt like fantasy-esque just in that regard because you kind of have to learn about their rules and, and what you can and can't do because they're so cut off from the outside world. Even though it's set in modern times, you wouldn't know because you're so immersed inside this world because you're immersed in the main character's world and she knows no different. I love the action and suspense in this book. It had a lot of it and it kept me turning those pages so that was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed the characters. I thought that they were there was a good mix and a good balance of characters. There were some people that didn't question authority at all. There was other people that 
were in the middle and there was people that really questioned it. So there was such a good mix of characters that I found I was never bored while reading it. The cons for this book. The only thing I could say that I didn't like about the actual story was the ending. I, it was predictable and it happened very quickly, like at the drop of a hat. So I knew it was coming and it just seemed too rushed for me. But it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the story or anything. I knew what was going to happen, so I was already prepared. And I thought that she did a, a good enough job where I was still satisfied, even though I wanted just a little bit more. The only other thing I really wanted out of the book, and this was just my own personal curiosity, was I wanted to know more about the start of the cult. I wanted to know why it happened, who the first follow followers were, and that sort of thing, but I can understand why that wasn't necessary to actually tell this story. But that was it. And let me see, my last question is, would I buy or own this book? I don't think I would buy it unless I decided I wanted to just start collecting all of Lisa Heathfield's books because I already do own Paper Butterflies, it's back right there. If I decided I wanted to collect your books, then I would add it to that collection, but I wouldn't go out of my way to buy it other than that because I don't think I would reread this. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I rated it 3.75 stars. The first line in this book was, here, crouch beside the toilet. I'm terrified I'm dying. The next book that I read this month was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This was for our hashtag on the booktube shelves pick for the month of August, but then I never read it in August, so we kind of moved it to September, and now we haven't really discussed whether we're gonna wrap this up in any way. I don't know. Um, I'll have to get in contact with the girls and find out and then get back to you guys. But I figured I would just give you my wrap up here because if I don't talk about it now, I'm gonna start to forget all the details about it. So this is the story, well, it's a story that kind of follows two separate timelines. One timeline is um, when this, massive flu breaks out across the globe and um, ends up kind of bringing around the end of times as we know it. Um, and then it jumps 15 years later and follows another character who um, kind of shows you what the world is like at that time. It was definitely not what I was expecting it to be when I went into it. I had this thought of it being a dystopian novel, which it really isn't in my opinion. I don't know. It's just very, very different from what I thought it was going to be. Um, this book was, I described it in I think my Goodreads review as sort of all loose ends in the beginning. It's one of those stories where you kind of are getting these snippets from all these different characters and you're kind of like, well, how are these going to connect? And then as the story progresses, they kind of get brought together, um, which I kind of figured out finally, like about, I don't know, 40, 50% in. And I was like, oh, this is what's happening. Then I really started to like really enjoy the story. Um, so if you want to know that ahead of time going in, you might enjoy it a little bit more than I did because sometimes when I go into books blind, I don't know these these things and I just kind of am like waiting, like what's happening, what's going on? Um, but yeah, at the end, it kind of brings it all together. Um, the writing was descriptive, but it wasn't flowery. It wasn't over the top because sometimes the, they can be like that. And I thought the characters were interesting. I did, however, for my cons, I wanted more about the virus and the worldwide ramifications, we kind of got a very narrow point of view just from a couple of characters' perspectives. Um, it wasn't enough to give me a full backstory and to really make me invested in that portion of the story. I, I just wanted so much more. Um, and also there was another part of the story where there was sort of a cult leader, like storyline sort of thing. And I just thought it was kind of a bit weird. I don't know, I didn't know if it really fit in with the story. Um, again, those parts weren't huge, so it didn't detract from the rest of the story, but I just didn't, I didn't find it that necessary. I don't know, it was just a little strange to me. Um, and I just didn't think there was enough action in the first half of the book, it kind of dragged just a little. But, Overall, once I had finished the story and got through the entire book and reflected on it, 
I realized how much I enjoyed it. It's one of those books where you don't know if you're enjoying it in the beginning because it's so loose and there's so many things going on. But by the time you get to the end of the book and everything is finally comes together and you realize what was happening through the entire book, you kind of look back and you're like, wow, okay, that puts a different take on what I read. <laughs> so my, my enjoyment of this was very strange in that I didn't enjoy it so much in the beginning, but I really enjoyed it by the end. I would definitely read another book by the author and I really enjoyed this one after the fact, after I realized what was going on and I ended up rating it four stars. Would I buy or own it? I actually already own it. I'm really glad that I, I did because I would probably give it another reread now that I know everything. I'd be able to go back and be able to have a little bit more clarity while reading it the second time. The first line in this book is, the king stood in a pool of blue light unmoored. The next book that I picked up this month was The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel. And I picked this up for Lisa's Buddy Reads group hosted by Lisa from Books and Smiles. Again, I will leave all the information down below. And this was a book that I have seen all over Instagram and booktube and stuff. So I was like, oh, this should be pretty good because a lot of people are enjoying it. So I was happy to pick it up, but I was a little hesitant just because I, I'd heard some mixed reviews on it. There were a few people that didn't really enjoy it and I didn't know why. So that being said, I'm going to give a trigger warning because there's a plot point in this that people just either can read or will be so turned off that they're gonna put the book down and that's incest. So there is incest in this book. It's dealt heavily in here. However, there's nothing there's no scenes that are graphic or describe it in any sort of way. I think Lisa was the one that said that Amy Engel does a good job of giving you just enough so you know what's going on but doesn't go into detail and you are able to visualize or take it as far as you want to with your own imagination and if you don't want to go that far you don't have to um, but it was still enjoyable which I found surprising. Um, because I'm not a huge person. It's not like I pick up a book and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's incest in it. Let me read this. That is definitely not something that I look for when going into a book. And I was surprised by it when I was reading it. I was like, oh, that's what's going on here. Um, so I at first was a little like, hmm, okay. But the way she writes the book, it's so readable and so addicting that you cannot put it down. And that's my first pro for this book. I couldn't put it down. As much as like that sort of like put me off just a tiny bit, I was like, well, I'm already this far into it. I'm invested into it. I want to read I want to see what's going to happen to the characters. So I kept reading. And this book isn't very large, so it was so quick to get through, and I thought that none of the parts were unnecessary. There are so many books that I read lately where I'm like, they could have cut this part out, or it didn't need to be this long, or this character really didn't even have to be in the book. Um, this, I felt every character, every scene, everything was necessary in this book. Um, her writing style was fantastic. I read um, the Book of Ivy duology, by her previously so I thought I was at least going to enjoy the writing and I did I really liked it and then my final pro was when I kind of already glanced over it and the, I really was hooked to the story despite the the subject matter despite what it was sort of about I was so hooked into it that I couldn't put it down she is fantastic in her storytelling just for that fact like how how could something that sort of disgusts me and I'm like, oh, I really don't know if I want to finish reading it, hook me so bad that I'm like, all right, I have to finish it. I have to know what happens. Um, so I really like that. And I, I like the main character herself. She was sort of a good balance for everything else that was happening in the story. She was like the, the voice of reason almost um, in it. So I, I enjoyed her quite a bit. My cons, um, again, the ending was a little predictable, but as some people pointed out in the Buddy Reads group, it was sort of probably meant to be that way, and it was more about 
the journey of getting to to there and and the ramifications and things like that so after the fact after I had saw those comments I was like oh yeah that's probably what it was and it was just me being a little judgmental about how predictable the ending was because I hate when I can call endings way ahead of time um, and the only other thing was I just didn't think there was enough consequences in this book which you guys will find out when you read it I'm not gonna go into any more detail because I don't want to give anything away um, but yeah that's my only other con would I buy or own this book? I loved reading it, but I don't know if I would ever reread it. Um, if I ever decided to collect her books, maybe I would buy it just to add it to my collection. But as of right now, I don't have any plans to. So right now, I wouldn't buy it. But I'm so glad I was able to get it out from the library and read it because it was a very quick, enjoyable read. I ended up reading this four stars. The first line in this book is the first time the first time I saw Roanoke was in a dream the last book that I read this month was Golden Fool by Robin Hobb this is book two in the Tawny Man trilogy and this is the third trilogy in the realm of the elderling series I can't really give you a synopsis because this is so far into the series of books that I would just be giving so much away so let's just dive right into my prose my pros are, as with every Robin Hobb book, that the characters are a driving force on why I love her books. They're so well fleshed out. They're, they're just fantastic to read about. I fall in love with characters over and over again, and this book was no exception. I just loved so many of them. I also loved in this book that the first trilogy that she wrote, the Farseer trilogy, and the second trilogy she wrote, the Live Ship Traders trilogy, came sort of together in this book. And that was just like the icing on the cake for me because I absolutely love the books anyway. But to finally have a little bit of a culmination of stuff was really great to see. Um, there were some new characters that were introduced that I ended up really enjoying. And there was more talk about dragons in this book, which I love dragons, so let's keep talking about them. My cons for this book, I have a couple, but they're just more of my own preferences. I don't think some of these would actually, other people might not mind them, but for me, I just did. I don't wanna to give too much away about the storyline, but um, first of all, it was very slow in some parts, but. I'm finding with Robin Hobb books, that's the case with all of them. In some part of a book, you're gonna find it slow because they're so large. This book looks not too bad, but it was, this one was one of her shorter ones so far that I've read. It was oh, still over 500 pages. So there were just some parts that I felt like could have been hurried along or cut out or something. There's an absence of a character that was in some previous books that I really felt in this book and I don't want to tell anyone who it is because I know there are people that are reading this series of books so I don't want to give that away but I just felt it a lot in this book and it kind of took away from my reading experience just a little bit and um, a couple of the main characters were at odds and I was like please don't be at odds because I really like what you guys are getting along and they were at odds but that's just again a personal <laughs> personal thing and the main character Fitz, who we've known since the very first book in the Farseer trilogy, I just feel like he's always being used by somebody and that just kind of annoys me and I hope that one day in some of these books somewhere he'll finally be able to come into his own and just be like, you know what, screw all of you. So those are my only cons which weren't really cons at all. I rated this one four stars and would I want to buy or own it? Absolutely, because one day I'm probably going to reread all of these books all over again. The first line in this book was, oh, where am I? The manuscript begun so many years ago ends in a flurry of blots and angry stabbings from my pen. So those were all of the books that I was able to accomplish in the month of September. I'm really enjoying this monthly reads, monthly wrap up format. I know my videos might be a little bit longer, but at least I'm able to film it all in one day and be able to give you guys my thoughts. I'm currently reading Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castell. 
This is book one in the Great Coat series, and I'm really enjoying this one. I kind of got five star tingles when I first started it, so we will see if that holds true. But anyway, what have you guys been reading during the month of September? What was your favorite read? Leave that down below because I definitely am always looking for books to add to my TBR. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great month and happy reading.